Right guys, so in today's video, we're gonna be looking at describing the cardiovascular adaptations that result from endurance exercise training. And to give you an idea of an exam question that might come up, I've taken this example from 2019, which is describe long-term vascular adaptations to endurance training, and it's worth four marks. Now there are a number of adaptations that occur as a result of endurance training, but they can be summarized as three main adaptations. First of which is cardiac hypertrophy. This is where the heart muscle gets bigger. Inc increased capillarization, so the number of capillaries that we have in the working muscles and in the lungs increases. And an increased arteriovenous oxygen difference. So let's look at those in a little bit more detail now. So when we exercise, the left ventricle is the part of the heart that does the most work. And this is because it's responsible for systemic blood flow. So that means to the working muscles and to the vital organs. And for that reason, it undergoes the biggest adaptations. As you can see from the graph here, the size of the chamber itself increases, as well as the thickness of the ventricular walls. Now this leads to an increase in stroke volume and because stroke volume increases, resting heart rate decreases because the heart doesn't need to pump as many times in order to maintain the same cardiac output. And as we can see in this graph here, from an athlete taking part in endurance training, the blue line represents pre-training and the red line represents post-training and you can see that there's an a significant increase in stroke volume. Okay, the next one, increased capillarization. Now, as I've already mentioned, in the muscles, we have a number of capillaries that surround each muscle fiber. We also have capillaries in the lungs around the alveoli. Now, when we take part in endurance training, the number of capillaries in the muscle fibers and in the lungs increases. Now what this allows for is a greater exchange of gases, greater exchange of nutrients. It also allows metabolic heat, which is produced when we exercise, to be dissipated more easily. And that prevents us from overheating. Now this increase in capillarization is generally accepted as being the most important factor for increasing VO2 max. And finally, increased arteriovenous oxygen difference. Now what this means is, is the level of oxygen in arterial blood and the difference between that and the level of oxygen in venous blood. Now this is because the body becomes more effective at redistributing blood to the active tissues. So when we're exercising, it becomes more efficient at directing blood to the working muscles and away from the vital organs that don't need the blood as, as much during that time. Now the active tissues also become more efficient at extracting oxygen and that's due to the increased number of capillaries. Now this increased arteriovenous oxygen difference is also a result of an increased number of red blood cells. So there's an, as red blood cells increase, the amount of oxygen that we can transport around the body also increases. Therefore, there's a bigger difference between arterial blood and then venous blood. And that's it guys. So when we're answering our exam question, we might want to make um, reference to some exercise examples just to give a little bit more detail. So some of the things that you could talk about, marathon runners, long distance cyclers, or even rowers. And really emphasize the point that taking part in these endurance based training activities will increase your VO2 max and therefore increase your endurance performance. So hopefully, now that you know all this information, you should be able to score full marks on this exam question.